Welcome everybody. We're gonna talk about the questions that you guys answered for chapter one. I got all your study guide responses, or everybody who did it anyways, and I got some interesting responses, and I wanna make sure I clarify a few things and go over the answers with you so that you know what's going on. All right, here we are. Catcher in the Rye, chapter one questions. The first question was approximately, where is the narrator when the story begins? And I got some pretty interesting answers. The correct answer, just so you know, He's somewhere in California, close to Hollywood at a mental institution. I had a couple people say he was at his brother DB's house. No, not quite. Some people thought he started at Pensy Prep, but if you read that first page closely, he's talking about a year later when he's at that mental institution about what had happened the past December. So when the story begins, he's in California, and then he flashes back to the previous December at Pensy Prep. The brother named DB, he is not, let me clarify this, he is not a prostitute. I had a lot of people say he was a prostitute in the answer for the occupation. He's not a prostitute. It says it in the book though. Some of you are yelling right now, I can tell. Behind the screen, you're yelling, wait a minute, it says he's a prostitute. No, Holden calls him a prostitute because he's a writer in Hollywood. You're gonna learn that Holden doesn't like the movies, so he thinks that writing for the movies makes you a prostitute. He's a writer for Hollywood, and his name is DB. He's got other another brother named Allie and a sister named Phoebe, and that's not who he's talking about in chapter one. In chapter one, he only mentions DB so far. Question three, Pensy Prep. It is not a college. A couple people are confused. The narrator is only 16 years old. It's a prep school, so uh, they're preparing for college. It's a fancy high school. You pay a lot of money to go to. They live in dorms, and it's in Pennsylvania. That's kind of what you need to know. It's near New York, but it's in Pennsylvania. Okay, not a college. Question four, coming up. Two reasons why he's not at the big football game. Uh, the first deals with the fencing team. So most of you figured this out. He just got back from the fencing competition in New York. That fencing competition didn't happen because he left the equipment on the subway. He's the manager of the fencing team and he was in charge of all the equipment. He left the equipment on the subway. So they had to give up. They had to forfeit their tournament and they headed back to Pensy. And he also didn't go to the game. He's up on the hill kind of looking at the game, but he's about to go say goodbye to his teacher. That's the second reason he wasn't at the game. Question five, he's going to visit and say goodbye to someone. That someone is Mr. Spencer, his history teacher. That one was easy. Pretty much everybody got that one. Number six, what is grip? So they say this a few times in the book. You had to look it up, probably, unless you've heard it before. That's an old fashioned term for influenza. So he's sick. Question seven, why did he get kicked out of Pensy Prep? Most of you got this one. He's failing four out of his five classes. Which one is he not? That's a, a question I didn't ask on the study guide, but he's passing English class. So all the rest are, are, he's failing. Number eight, it's December. Why does the narrator have no coat? Okay. I don't know if you missed this in the reading, but a couple people put he couldn't afford a coat. Um, a couple people put some other weird answers. The correct answer is that someone stole his coat. So he has a nice camel hair coat. And the week before, someone had stolen that coat along with his nice gloves. So he didn't have one to wear around, even though it's December. Number nine, why does the narrator have trouble breathing when, when he runs to the gate from the football, from watching the football game? Um, the correct answer is because he was a heavy smoker and because he grew over six inches in the past year, for some reason, that makes him not be able to breathe very well. Question 10, does the narrator believe Mr. Spencer is wealthy or not wealthy? This one was pretty easy. I thought it was a multiple choice question. The correct answer is not wealthy. And the evidence that he gives is because they did not have a maid to answer the door. So he went over to Mr. Spencer's house to say goodbye, he knocked on the door. Mrs. Spencer answered the door. He said, well, they don't have much money because they don't have a maid answering the door. Now, I want you to think about this. Do you know anybody who has a maid who answers the door for them? 
If you do, I'd like to meet that person. None of us has a maid who opens the door. This is the narrator's measure for if someone's wealthy or not, if they have a maid to answer the door for them. Mr. Spencer does not, so he is not wealthy. What does that tell you about the narrator? He is wealthy, and a lot of the kids that go to this school are pretty wealthy. Finally, number 11, we learn the narrator's first name at the end of the first chapter. His name is, careful, Holden, not Halden. A couple of you, okay, I'm talking to you, Hunter, Mark, you guys wrote Halden. I have no idea where you got that from. Spelled it wrong and everything. It's Holden, not Halden. Somebody thought it was the name of the narrator was Spencer. No, he goes to say goodbye to Mr. Spencer. The narrator's first name is Holden. Okay, you guys did a pretty good job. We're gonna maybe keep rolling with this question and answer session like, like we're really in class, this is kind of fun. So, um, all right, hope you enjoyed. Good luck with chapter two.